Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church uh, to worship today at the traditional service. We're so glad that you have joined us. Friends, this is a, a communion service today, so if you have not gathered a little bit of bread and some uh, wine or juice or, or, or whatever makes sense, whatever you have at the home so that you can celebrate communion with us, I would urge you to do so um, uh, soon. Around the world, God calls his people to break bread and to pour wine. God calls our family to come to the table. Let us worship God together. Let us begin by singing, where cross the crowded ways of life. Let us pray. O oh God, you are always giving to us out of your abundance, but our hands are too full to receive your blessings. You are always fulfilling your promise to provide for us in the present, but our minds are anxious about the future. 
You are always willing to hear our confession, but our hearts are too often hardened to your grace. O God of loaves and fishes, meet the hungers of your people today. Strengthen us in body, mind, and spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, God is the giver of every perfect gift. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's best gift, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, our hope and strength by the power of your spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your word so that we may see the glorious signs of your promise fulfilled through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Genesis 32 verses 22 through 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. There are few more mysterious passages in, in the scripture than, than this one that we read this morning about Jacob wrestling with this stranger that shows up in the middle of the night. It's very strange. And so I wanna dive right into it this morning to see what God has for us today. And in order to do so, we, we need to start with the backstory. So we've been talking about Jacob now for several weeks. You'll remember that Jacob is the one who had this terrible uh, falling out with his brother that was pretty much all Jacob's fault. Jacob had gone in to, to his father to visit him when he was blind and dying, and he'd gone in dressed up as Esau, 
and had stolen the blessings that were intended for Esau. And Esau was understandably angry, so angry, in fact, that Jacob had to run for his life. And so he ran to his uncle Laban's house. And after working for uncle Laban for 14 years, he had four wives, 13 children, multiple flocks, and, and had amassed for himself a wealth. And it was at this point that God directed him to go home, to go back to his, his father and his grandfather's land where Esau was. And Jacob was pretty sure that his uncle Laban was not going to be happy with this idea, and so he snuck off in the night. And Uncle Laban was furious, and so he chased him down and confronted him, and the two managed to work out some sort of an agreement, but part of that agreement was that, that Jacob would never set foot on Uncle Laban's land again. And so we find Jacob this, this morning. We find him uh, caught, you know, between having burned his bridges with his uncle Laban, he now has to go home to the place where he'd burned his bridges with his brother Esau. And so he wisely sends a messenger ahead to say, hey, I'm coming, I'm coming to see you. And the messenger returns and says, Esau is coming out to meet you. And he's bringing with him 400 men an army with him. So, you know, it sure seems like Esau is still mad. And so uh, Jacob does what uh, anyone would do in, in this predicament. He prays to God for deliverance. And then, having prayed, he, he looks about his own resources and tries to figure out a plan for, you know, how he might save his skin. And so he determines to send his brother Esau some gifts, and he sends him animals as gifts, droves, flocks of animals. By the time he's done sending off all of these droves of animals, he's sent 550 animals to his brother. And then he, he puts his family across the Jabbok River into his family's land, and he himself lays down on the other side for this fitful night sleep. He is trapped, trapped between his furious uncle Laban behind him and his furious brother Esau in front of him. And it is while he sleeps in this, in this trapped situation that this mysterious figure comes and, and fights with him all night long, all night long. And, and we don't really know who this is. I mean, is it, is it an angel? Is it a demon? Is it a representative of, of Esau or a representative of Uncle Laban? Is it God himself? What we do know is that, that uh, Jacob seems to hold his own for a while until the, the stranger touches him in the hip and puts his hip out of joint. And then Jacob continues to wrestle with this stranger and, and, and manage pretty well. And just before daybreak, the stranger insists that he will leave, that it mu he must leave. And Jacob says, bless me. He insists, bless me. I won't let go of you until you bless me. Now, it's kind of a strange request, really, because Jacob has been immensely blessed so far. He has wives and, and children and flocks and, and wealth. He's been blessed. But Jacob seems to be concerned that the whole thing is in jeopardy. And so he says to him, bless me. And so the stranger blesses him. But not in the way that he's been blessed before. The stranger this time blesses him by giving him a new name. He will be called Israel. No longer will he be called Jacob, which means surplanter or deceiver. He will be called Israel, which means one who strives with God 
one who is ruled by God, one who is made right by God, essentially one who is in relationship with God. It's a good name. And the, the stranger blesses him and, and disappears. And Jacob rises and he limps across the Jabbok River and joins his family. And he joins his family with hope because he's been blessed with a new name. He's been blessed with a new identity. And, and he is a new man. And he goes to meet his brother with courage. Now, it's a strange story, and I don't want to take away from the mystery of this story. And yet, I think there are some things that we can say about the story and about what it means to be in a relationship with God, at least about what it meant for Jacob to be in a relationship with God. So I think we can, can note that, that Jacob encountered God in, in a murky in-between time. And, and, and isn't that often the case, that we encounter God in a, in a murky in-between time when we're in trouble and we don't quite know what to do, like Jacob. We also can say that, that this encounter with God um, re resulted in a struggle for Jacob. And in fact, he got injured in the process. And, and sometimes our encounters with God end up in a struggle, or we're in a struggle when we, when we encounter God in the first place. But the other thing that we can say in this is that it was in the struggle that Jacob's identity was found and formed. Now, I have to tell you, I, I don't think that struggle is a particularly compelling characteristic of a, of a religion. Most people don't look, go looking for a religion so that they can, they can struggle. In fact, the other night we were at Bible study on Monday night, and we were talking about yet another passage in Genesis, um, an earlier passage where, where Abraham is having a conversation with God about, about what will happen to his descendants in the future. And God tells him that his future descendants will, will go to a land that is not their own. They will be foreigners in this land, and they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years but that God will deliver them, that God will bring judgment upon the nation that enslaves them, and that God will deliver them, rescue them, and they will come out with, with riches. And as we were talking about this, one of, the, one of the people in the Bible study said, hey, hey wait a minute, how is this a good deal that, that these people are, are going to uh, be enslaved and, and oppressed for 400 years. How is that a good deal? And it's a good question. And we, we talked about it a bit and struggled with, with that idea a bit. And then one of, our, one of our wise women in the Bible study said, but, uh, but don't you sometimes just need to go through stuff? She said, well, nobody likes it, but don't you need to sometimes just go through stuff so that you, that you grow and, and change? Indeed, sometimes don't you just need to struggle a little to become better than you already are, to become more, to become new? So I know that uh, secretly we all sort of wish that we could just sort of put in our orders for blessings to God and, and have them be showered upon us. We also know that that's not how that works. We also know, I think, that that's not really what God is about. God seems to be about drawing to himself a servant people that, yes, he will bless, but that also through whom he will bless 
the peoples of the earth. And sometimes becoming God's people and, and being about God's work in the world is just a wonderful, happy thing, joyful thing. But sometimes being, becoming God's people and being about God's work in the world is, is hard. Sometimes it's a challenge and sometimes it's a struggle. I think that becoming God's children is, is hard work. And that sometimes we have to struggle a little to find our identity as God's children. Many years ago, I ordered one of those butterfly kits uh, that you can get at your home and, and do with your children. I ordered it to do with my, my three sons. And we got uh, this little kit and we constructed the, the little home for the butterflies and, and we got this little uh, dish of, uh, of caterpillars and we put them inside and we fed them and we watched them and, and pretty soon they formed chrysalises. And, and we watched them emerge from these chrysalis. It, it's really a very miraculous process. Did you know that when a butterfly, when, it, when a caterpillar forms a chrysalis around itself, that it, it digests itself until it becomes kind of a caterpillar soup? Ooh. And then the, the cells, they, they divide and, and divide again until it reforms into a, a butterfly. And then we have the most miraculous thing that takes place as this butterfly struggles to emerge from the chrysalis. Now, as I can tell you, as, a, as an adult, and even watching my children, it's very tempting to help the butterfly along. I just really wanted to go get a pair of scissors and just take a little snip on the edge of that chrysalis. But to do so would be to cripple the butterfly for life. No, the butterfly needs to struggle against this chrysalis so that it pushes strength into its wings so that when it comes out of, out of the cocoon, it can, it can stretch its wings and become who it is meant to be and live into its name. It, it can be a butterfly and it can fly. Friends, sometimes we just need, we need the struggle. We need to go through stuff so that we will become strong and hopeful and live into our identity as God's daughters and sons. Amen. Friends, as we come to the table today, we come as God's children, God's daughters and sons, called by God to come. It's family dinner time. Come and be around the table. Come to the feast that the Lord has prepared. We come so that we might be strong, so that we might be full of hope, and so we might live into our identity as God's children. So as we come to the table, to the feast which our Lord has prepared, let us pray. Gracious God, we come this day giving thanks with our hearts lifted high. When we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name, you gave us your name. When we were lost and had turned away, you came after us. You would not leave us alone. And when we came back to you, you opened your arms wide to welcome us. And so in gratitude, we join our voices with our brothers and sisters around this city and with the whole church on heaven and earth to proclaim your praises. 
Especially we thank you today for the gift of yourself in Jesus. For us you were born, for us you preached and taught and forgave and showed us the way into your kingdom. For us you were crucified and for us after death you rose again. Because you have demonstrated your great love to us, O oh God, we especially pray for those in need this day. We pray for those who are, are sick, who are those who are struggling with, with difficult times, who have decisions to make. We pray for those who are in danger, who put their lives at risk to care for those uh, struggling with this virus. We pray for those who are, are lost, who need your care, and who need to come to you. We pray for those who are sad, for those who are lonely. We pray for those who lead and ask for your strength and wisdom. We pray this day, on this holy day, that you would do again what you did in an upper room so many years ago, that you would take this bread and this wine and this juice and these things that we have prepared in our homes, that you would bless them and that you would make them to become for us your body and your blood so that we might become your people full of hope, full of strength, and full of a sense of your purpose. Fill us with your Holy Spirit in this day, that we might live as your faithful children, to proclaim your grace and your goodness, to bless the peoples of the earth all of our days. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this, remembering me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Drink all of you of it. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. And so friends, I would invite you to take a piece of the bread and and to eat it and give thanks. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Then also take the, the wine or the juice or whatever it is that you have prepared and drink of this. This is the cup of blessing, the cup of the new covenant for you, for all of us. These are the gifts of God for all of us, God's people. Amen.
Jesus said, freely you have received, freely also give. This is the time in our service when we freely give our hearts to God who has given his heart to us. If you would like to support the ministry of First Presbyterian in Elkhart, we invite you to send a check to 200 East Beardsley Avenue in Elkhart, Indiana, 46514. Thank you. Several years ago, I attended a music and worship conference and Brian Wren was the clinician. He's well known around the world for his beautiful texts set to many great and wonderful melodies. Our closing hymn today is Bring Many Names. And Brian was telling those of us in attendance that he was referring to the many ways that we speak of God, warm, loving, caring, strong, all those things that we think of when we uh, create a memory of our being with God. I invite you to sing, Bring Many Names. There are six verses, so buckle up and enjoy singing this very special hymn, Bring Many Names. this day to embrace God, whether this is a a free and easy time in your life or a time of struggle, you belong to God. 
And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all always. Amen. Thanks for joining us this week at First Presbyterian. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye.